In this video, we're going to take a look at the mixed material and the blend material for Octane for Cinema 4D. Both types of materials allow you to mix other Octane materials together to create a more complex uh, material for your surface. So in this scene, which is the materials 01.C4D scene, I have a mixed material applied to the bar machine surface back here. And it's blending a glossy material with a metal material to create this kind of effect. And a blend material is similar, but a bit more complex. So what we'll do is we'll start by taking a look at how the mixed material works, and then we'll move on to the blend material. So I'm gonna go into the material node editor. So we'll choose materials, octane node editor, and let's create a new mixed material. And I'm gonna create, just for example, two glossy materials. So create one octane material, another octane material. Let's go into their settings here. And under basic, I'll set this material type to glossy. And under diffuse, I'm going to set the color to like a bright red. And then for this octane material, let's actually name this so it's easier to see what's going on. We'll call this red glossy and then let's go into this octane material under basic set its material type to glossy let's rename it green glossy and under diffuse set this to bright green And I'm gonna connect red glossy to material one and green glossy to material two. And the result is a yellow material because in computer graphics, red plus green makes yellow. So now let's apply this, close some of this stuff. Let's apply this to the big bar machine. And if we take a look here in the render view, you can see now we have a yellow looking machine that's blending the red and green. So if I take the amount slider here in the mix material and I move it over to one side, our surface becomes totally green. If I move it over to the other side, it becomes red. So these materials that are being mixed together could be any type of material, including other uh, mixed materials. Um, but things become much more interesting with when you use a texture to control the amount. So for example, if I go into the textures here and I'm gonna choose the dirt texture, which is kind of like an ambient occlusion texture. It shades based on the uh, recesses of the surface. So recesses of the surface become dark, exposed parts of the surface become light. So it's kind of an ambient occlusion style shading. So I'm going to plug this into the amount slider and you can see immediately we have kind of a yellow greenish color here in the nooks and crannies of the surface and a red uh, color on the more exposed parts of the surface. Then I can go into the dirt texture and start to experiment with the strength and increase the details and the radius and so on. But you can see how this texture is now controlling the amount of the octane material based on its light and dark output. So now let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's blend a metallic material with a glossy material and we'll use some of the textures that were created uh, for this uh, surface to uh, kind of add detail and control the amount of mixing between the metallic and glossy material. So let's start by creating a metallic material. So I'm going to create a brand new material. Zoom in here. Let's rename it. We'll call this bar machine metal material. And I'm going to apply it to all the surfaces in the bar machine. So we'll choose apply to objects. Now we have it looks kind of white, but that of course is because we had to set the material type. So let's select the uh, bar machine metal material, go into basic, and set this to metallic material. Now I got something that looks kind of chromey. 
So now we can bring in some textures. So I'm going to go in here and pull in an image texture. And for the file, I'm going to use Big Bar Machine Base Color. Let's not worry about copying it into the project. We'll just leave it where it is for the moment. And I'm going to plug this into Diffuse. And as we know from the video on the metallic material, we're not going to see much of a change when we do that. I am going to also connect this to Specular. Now we can kind of see how that texture is coloring the Specular highlights of the machine. I'm going to go down to the IOR mode and let's set this to IOR plus color. So it's going to use the color of the texture, but now we can control the index of refraction as well as the as well as the coefficient or the Fresnel effect. So I'm going to increase the metallic IOR as well as this slider right here. So these are the N and K values that we talked about in the metallic material video. So we get something that looks kind of like that. Maybe do something like that. And I'm going to create another image texture. This is going to be my metallic texture, which is going to control the specular map. So I want to set this image texture type to float. And then let's select the image. So that's going to be the metallic image, this one right here. And we'll connect it to specular map. Now you can see that the specular map is controlling. Now you can see that the specular map is controlling which parts of the surface are metallic. The other parts of the surface are coming across as somewhat diffuse, because so they're kind of like a diffuse material. It's so not quite what we want. What would be nicer is to have more of a glossy material on those non-metallic parts. And that's kind of where the mixed material comes in. But we, before we get to the mixed material, let's add a couple more textures in here, get a roughness texture as well as a bump texture, or I should say a normal texture. So let's create another image texture. This will be a roughness. So let's set the type to float and find that roughness texture. Here we go. And we'll connect this to roughness. That kind of dirties it up a little bit. It starts to look a bit more interesting. And then finally, let's go in here and create another image texture. This will be our normal texture. So let's select the normal texture. And connect this to the normal channel. You see just a very slight, subtle, normal bump on the surface. Makes it look a bit more interesting. OK, so now we have our metallic material set up. So let's create our glossy material. What I'll do is I'll just use one of the existing ones. So let's disconnect the screen. And let's disconnect the dirt. Just get rid of these. And I'm going to take my red glossy and let's rename this. Let's call it Bar Machine Glossy. And I'm going to reuse some of these textures, which was a good way to save memory. So I'm going to plug the same diffuse image into diffuse. I'm going to plug the same roughness texture into roughness. And I'll connect the same normal into normal. Right. It's not updating properly. That's because I think I hit the power by accident. There we go. Set the power back to one. Um, I kind of moved that by accident when I was trying to move the node. It happens. Um, OK, so now we have our glossy material. We can go in here and change things like, uh, let's also go in here to the editor and turn on animate preview so that we can get an update. That's being a bit stubborn. But in any case, we can see right here that it is, in fact, updating correctly. So now what I can do is I'm going to go down here to the metal material 
and connect this to material 2 of our mix material. You notice that the mix material has its own slot for displacement. So if you're going to use a mix material with displacement, you want to connect to the displacement node and displacement map to the mix material, not necessarily the materials that are going into the mix material. But we're going to cover displacement in depth in another video. But now we have our mix material set up. Let's actually apply it to the surface. And right now, we can see here is the result, but it's a bit underwhelming. And that is because right now our amount slider in the mix material is just kind of set to one. So we're just getting kind of a blend. So if I go to one side, I get the metallic material. If I go to the other, I get the glossy material. Take the bar machine glossy material. Let's go to specular and Make sure that that is increased and go to index, clean that up a little bit. Okay, so we have kind of a dull shininess there. Um, but what we need to do is connect a texture to this amount slider so that we don't, we get more than just moving this back and forth. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse my specular map material. So this again is going to control which parts of the surface get that metallic material in which part get the glossy material. Let's connect it like there. And I think what I have is I have it reversed. So the metal material is getting applied to these parts and the glossy material is getting applied to these parts. So let's just try doing a switch right here. And there we go. That's what I want. So just to do a quick recap, we have our mixed material applied to the entire surface right here. In material one, we have our metal material. And so that's being connected into material one. There we go, that makes it easier to see. And then we have our glossy material is being connected into material two. The amount is being controlled by the specular map texture. And then we have a normal map, the same normal map connected to both materials, the same diffuse uh, texture being connected to the diffuse channel of glossy and the diffuse channel of metallic material. It's also being connected to the specular input of the metallic material. And then we have a, the same roughness texture is being plugged into both the glossy and the metal material. And then the specular map or this metal texture, which is created in substance, is being connected to the specular map input. And of course, you could also add color correct nodes in between these textures and the materials to do a little bit more fine tuning if you wanted to create a more obvious difference between the two materials. But that's the basics of working with the mixed material. And it's pretty powerful because as I said before, you can actually add other mixed materials into the inputs for a mixed material, thus making it much more sophisticated, you know, layering a whole bunch of different materials and using different maps to control them. The other option, of course, is to use a blend material, which we're going to take a look at next.